Hello everyone, and welcome to another Redstone video with Cass on the Mizuma channel. So guys, um, a few days ago uh, I showcased this invention, which I was going to call the Hipster Expendable Campfire or something, but I came up with a more user-friendly name, so I named it the Magic Campfire. Uh, this is the first expandable version I came up with uh, using a concept I saw on uh, Mazecraft's channel, uh, which is in the video description, by the way, if you guys want to check it out. And was also showcased by Phenomen12. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I have a more uh, practical design I will show you uh, in a minute. Expandable as well. Much simpler, but. Anyways, I'm going to do a tutorial on this one because it has a lot of uh, cool concepts. The, the the circuit is really smart, and it uses a expandable and programmable piston tape uh, that doesn't need any detectors. So it's pretty cool. It's a cool tool to have when you need to design things with redstone. So uh, I I will also uh, show you a few concepts uh, that should make it easier for you guys to design your own campfire things in the future. Uh, first, let me demonstrate the, the more practical design I was mentioning before. It's this one, I made it on my server. So yeah, it's pretty fast, doesn't have a nice animation. It's super fast and everything. This is Sabrina Hat, by the way. Uh, those are the guys online on the server right now. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, let me. This is a uh, smaller, naked, stripped version uh, of the system. So all we have here is a piston tape that rotates between the other rack blocks and the blocks you choose to have on the floor. By the way, those blocks don't need to be solid. You can have even half slabs. It's not a problem. And this block in red here is a T flip flop. So uh, every time it rotates, it chooses whether it's time to yeah, to activate the fire thing down here with the dispensers or if it's just going to place the floor so if you click it it retracts the floor runs the tape once puts the floor back again and then the the red circuit activates and then the fire is there i will show guys how to activate the fire as well uh, the piston tape is programmable uh, i have three items here so the piston has to move three blocks before it stops itself and let me just demonstrate, if I place uh, three more items here, it will rotate six times, which means that it will return to the point where it was before. So if I place nine items, it will rotate twice before activating, which is silly, but it's just for demonstration purposes. So it retracts the floor three times, three times, and three times more, and then it goes. It's only going to activate uh, the final circuit when it's done rotating. Yeah, so the circuit uh, doesn't depend on specific timing. All you have to do is to place the correct number of items corresponding to the number of slices that you expanded your version to, and it's going to do the right thing for you. So yeah, no worries there, the this, this circuit is pretty smart. Uh, the secret uh, to light up a piece of nether rack or any block, we are, we are just using nether rack here because it, uh, it can keep the fire. Uh, it, while having a air gap here and a piston, which is useful because we can swap the blocks on the surface in this case, is to quickly give uh, this piston uh, two pulses, two one tick pulses followed by each other. I don't know, two two real quick uh, one tick pulses, and then all you have to do is to power this dispenser down here uh, directly from the input, just like this. So uh, this green circuit will do the two tick think the two pulses <laughs> and the silent circuit is just powering uh, the dispenser directly no delays here so if you flick the lever now it lights up it works every time uh, there this is highly unstable it, it took me a long time to find the proper timings for this thing to work because there are certain configurations that will work uh, just sometimes but not all the time and th there are some things that, that are really weird like if I destroy the white circuit now and I just I just basically got rid of the repeater so now I'm going to try to power this directly using a lever 
and it won't work yeah there are other ways to do that let me just show you one more here is a second really simple setup that you can use uh, yeah there is a burnout circuit here uh, and this is going to be uh, able to clock twice because this will give out a three ticks and a half pulse and this goes to the piston and then I have a three tick delay before I power the, the dispenser so if I power this indirectly now this is very stable yeah and very simple to make so I, I really recommend using uh, this method of all that I tested this is our initial setup we are going to make it expandable uh, expanded to five slices so dispensers at the bottom fill them up with uh, fire charges and sticky pistons and your nether rack line goes here when the, the nether rack blocks are pulled down uh, they get into this piston tape which consists of two pairs of pistons so those two will consist of a sticky piston and a regular piston and those two are regular pistons this is the positioning of them and this is where the floor blocks are going to be stored so in this case we have five blocks of other rack and five blocks of five regular blocks for the floor to wire the piston tape what you want to do is to have a solid block underneath the sticky piston the only sticky piston on the piston tape and then flip a lever so the piston gets extended now hook this up on the opposite side using redstone dust here it should be on then place a torch here solid block and another torch so those two pistons are going to be extended now one more torch here solid block and this guy right here uh, needs a regular piston to update it yeah because the way the, that this thing works so this uh, torch here will cause this piston to update this other piston so uh, basically when we hook this up to, re to a repeater down here it will work as a clock just like this build a small platform underneath the dispensers and place repeaters and set them all on three ticks each now at the same line as the pistons just place another platform and place a bunch of repeaters set on one tick and have redstone wire going all the way just like this and we can reset this line just like this so those blocks have an air gap down there so uh, this is how the programmable piston tape works it it doesn't have any detectors on it yeah so what we do instead is we have this dropper here and whenever this clock runs it will pulse this hopper dropper thing and you will see in a moment uh, how this is going to count the items for us we need to have this like so and then a, another guy here and we will need a redstone block here we can actually simulate this using this so let me just finish this by placing redstone dust here one sticky piston facing downwards and place a block here with redstone dust uh, we also yeah I accidentally broke the, <laughs> this piston this this guy is very important underneath this piston we need a regular piston to update it so place it just like this so every time the clock runs it touches this piston so yeah we're ready now I hope it's not too confusing so the way it works is uh, when we one tick those guys this block gets here so there are a bunch of items here so this line will stay on all the time and this piston gets down so there is nothing to lock uh, this repeater by the way we don't need this lever anymore we, we already have the redstone block and then the clock starts running and because this block of redstone will be here every time this pulses items flow here and they can't get back because the hopper will be locked and then when this uh, dropper finally runs out of items there is not going to be power here anymore this piston returns to its original place and it locks the clock again so if I pull these blocks down uh, we can simulate this oh I forgot to remove this block so let's see yeah we need to reset it manually <laughs> sorry guys I always forget something 
reset, get rid of this block. So uh, let's run a small simulation now. Two, three, four, five. Yeah, and then it stopped. So uh, if we now send a one tick pulse here, the items will return to the dropper and the system is completely reset. Well, it's now time to automate all that stuff. So just do like this, play, place uh, one repeater on one tick underneath this second redstone block here. Then this, if you place this, this is going to pulse just like this. It's not a problem, don't worry. And then let's have some wiring here. We need to get uh, this signal up here, but I think we will need a slab in this case. So we can do this, this, and still have the signal down here. So as strangely as it might look, uh, this redstone wire is going to power this piston. And then we can actually do this and this and place one repeater here so we can extend the signal. You can also have a solid block here if you want. So what this does is uh, it will send a one tick pulse and this one tick pulse will start the tape. But be, uh, before that it will pull those blocks down. So it pull the, pulls the blocks down, then runs the tape and what happens is because this was going to be powered, this piston was going to be is going to be extended. Then when it's unpowered again because the tape finishes working, it will send another one tick pulse, and this one tick pulse will uh, reset the programmable piston tape and send another one tick pulse here, so those blocks will get in place. So this is uh, the swapper system. And this is also going to be our input. I will show you guys how to hook up this input uh, to the surface later. It was quite complicated, but I managed to do that. We don't need this, by the way. So let's run a quick test. It's a falling edge system. So this alone this does all that. So all we need to do now is to have a system to set the blocks on fire. And to do that, we are going to use this piston here and then it's going to hook this up to a T flip flop. This is just here to produce a another one tick pulse every time every other time. And then uh, this we can hook up whoops to a to another piece of wire here. One repeater on two ticks here. Solid block and then this line goes here. So this here works as a pulse extender. We start with two ticks there, but then those two, three ticks, those repeaters on three ticks will extend the pulse here. So, torch here. And we will have this and this. Now we need to block this off. We will have a burnout circuit here, and that's responsible for doing those uh, double pulses here, as I showed you in the beginning of the video. And then uh, all we need to do is to set uh, this up for uh, to properly work so it will set only when they're not a wreck on fire. So if you have the regular floor here, this guy should be down, otherwise it should be here. So in this case I have regular floor, so I place this here. And this should be always up here if you're not using the system. So let's try this out. Whoops. So yeah, I missed this one piece of redstone dust. So let's see how the closing works. So yeah, it never wastes uh, fire charges, which is a great feature. There we go, guys. All right, so finally, let me show you uh, how to hook up a input to the surface level. So yeah, just poke a, a hole on the ground, uh, aiming at this piston, and then place a slab here, then mm, need to jump, then place, whoops, one solid block here, and another one here, place a hook here, another hook here, so this piece of redstone dust is not going to point uh, anyway, uh, and your input is going to be right here, fix the floor, 
that's the button. And there you go. This is how it works, guys. So, yeah, uh, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I hope that all this information is useful to you somehow. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time, guys. Bye bye.